What's going on, everybody? Welcome back for another video. In this one, we're talking about robots and specifically, can robots simplify parking lot striping? But before we get too far in the video, I just want to say don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon. That way you can be notified anytime we drop some new content. Now, there's no question that artificial intelligence is here and it's here to stay. Artificial intelligence has been accessible to a certain extent but we've never had it at our fingertips like we do today. For example, when you're going through and shopping at a particular location, right? Artificial intelligence is suggesting to you items that you might be interested in. When you're typing on your computer and your computer, when you misspell a word, is trying to auto-correct it, that's artificial intelligence, but now the common people like you and I have AI at our very fingertips. Really, if you think about it, artificial intelligence is really revolutionizing every aspect of our life. When you go to a McDonald's, you see a kiosk where there used to be a cash register. And they're trying to make the complete switch to a integrated system that doesn't include you and I. I actually got a question from a subscriber that said, do you think that robots will replace you soon? And my answer to that was, yes, I do. I found this article absolutely amazing, and I wanted to share it with you. Let's look at it right here. The title of the article is, Can Robots Simplify Parking Lot Striping? Pre-marking can be a tedious and time-consuming task, but technology is advancing to help striping contractors get more work done faster. As contractors prepare for more than 173,000 miles of United States roads, that are in poor repair, and as private work from parking lot construction and maintenance holds firm, even as labor is in short supply, technology capable of streamlining pavement and striping and marking will become more attractive. And this is true. This is totally true. Let's keep going. Striping of roadways requires not just the high temperature application of thermoplastic, but a pre-lining process commonly completed by a surveying team charged with identifying the exact position of lane markers, generally using a total station. Now, I want to stop right here because in my line of work, I actually work for a surveyor. Usually, when we begin to do topos or pin surveys, Typically, we don't use state plane coordinates. We just, in our northing and our easting, we run 10,000, 10,000, and 1,000. Just an arbitrary elevation. Doesn't matter. Not Especially if you're not running an elevation. But typically, in roadway construction, you're going to be running elevation. But state plane coordinates are most likely what they're using in the development of these highways and roadway systems. That's why this is absolutely fascinating for me. They're integrating this with surveying technology, essentially with, uh, essentially with uh, satellites. As we get back to the article, automated solutions are coming to the market, including the TIY mobile robot product line for roadways and parking lot pre-lining and turf line marking. All right. Essentially, they're just saying that they're developing a robot that's out. It's basically going to do your layouts for you. I tried to find some video content on this and I have not found any content at all on this, but could you imagine you're, I know a lot of you guys are just now starting your business. You are just now 
getting into the industry. Could you imagine the amount of time and effort that you would save if you had one of these things? But might I mind you, if you're not even running a GR5, if you're running a Hyper VR, you're paying 40 grand. A piece of survey equipment that is going to let you get the job done. But really, essentially, guys, what this is going to do is make you and I obsolete if we don't adjust with the times. All those jobs that you do, all the striping that you do, all the laboring, the new layouts and everything, technology is saying we've got a solution to all of that. And if you think about it, it's a safer alternative. You got people driving on the highway. And instead of having a bunch of guys out there in safety vest and people are driving, acting crazy on the highway, you just stick this robot in the, the, the potential legal litigation or any employees dying as a result of an accident dramatically decreases. And when society integrates things like this, for example... That's one of the first things that they use it for it to sell it to the public. This is going to be safer. And this will be safer. Let's get back to the article. These automation tools use either cell connectivity or an onboard GNSS device to orient the robot geographically as it sprays a paint line that delineates the precise precision for pavement marking, okay? That means that there's a robot that's going to be able to give you new layouts. That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be wild to program this robot on a coordinate system to do a 700-stall layout in a few hours? That would be wild. I think that's coming. I think that's coming very soon. But it says right here, the tiny surveyor and the tiny pre-marker robots integrate with global navigation satellite system. Just GLONASS, that's what we call it. GNSS. Receivers from major manufacturers, including Topcon, that's what I use every day, is a Topcon uh, Hyper VR. Gets you good signal, even in some really thick trees. You'll be down in the bottom of a creek, and it gets you really good signal. Uh, never used a Trimble or a Lika, but it says Trimble and Lika. But then it says, goes on to say, the tiny surveyor, unlike the tiny pre-marker, is not sold with its own GLONASS GNSS receiver and integrates with external total stations for positioning data, including height measurements. A prism mounted beneath the tiny surveyor's GNSS antenna enables accuracy tolerance of less than one inch. That's precise. That's precise, isn't it? Right here, though. The robots mark points with a standard aerosol can, making fast of roadwork center lines or layout of sites like solar parks. Using two points for a line or three points for an arc, the robots have application pre-marking lines on roadways and survey site staking. Now, this all sounds great, but if you set up your machine, if you set that base point up on point one, and then point one gets knocked out, and then you think point one is five feet this way, and then you set up on another pin or another uh, base point or another uh, localization point, whatever the case may be, you set up on that, and you don't get that robot and configure your base station system to say, this is what point I'm on, your entire job can go like this and rotate in a way that is... Not good. So these things, I would say, would require some supervision, especially for these new layouts. 
but it says the robots are the only com- uh, the robots are only one component in an overall solution that also includes a tablet and a cloud application that controls and can lock the robot. The ca- the cloud application also enables tiny mobile robots to access and troubleshoot robots for their customers and the tablet controller can be used to manually operate the robots through a bluetooth connection. And that's the same thing if you have a field book. Your field book essentially connects to your uh, uh, to your uh, system that you're using. They link together through a Bluetooth application. Okay, whether it's you have the Topcon FC five thousand, the FC six thousand, whatever the case may be. Even if you don't have a tablet form, they link through Bluetooth. Guys, this is going to replace us. This is a fast track to replace striping. If we don't change with the times, it's going to replace you. You will become obsolete. I will become obsolete. If we don't change with the times. But right here, it says the robots do their own edge computing to work to automate their precise positioning capabilities critical in applications where they may not be able to access a cellular network, this heavy lifting is handed by the robot operating system or the ROS framework, which gives software access to hardware resources, provides the drivers required to run the hardware and enables multiple processes to coordinate across the different pieces of hardware and the components that comprise a robot. GLONASS or GNSS location and layouts downloaded from the cloud or installed through a USB port give the robots the information they need to navigate. So there's still an essential element of human instrumentation in this. You can't just set these things up and then here they go. I mean, they require obvious maintenance and uh, supervision, so on and so forth. But right here it says parking lot problems. Beyond roadways, the robots have applications in parking lots as well as an indoor line marking application, according to Tiny Mobile Robot CEO Jens Peter Christensen. Parking lots, however, present special challenges for automation. In parking lots, the major challenge for pre-marking or laying out is that GPS accuracy is reduced by trees and buildings. This is true. This is very true, but if you have, it is true to a certain extent because if you operated by line of sight instead of a GPS system that was connected to satellites, you're talking about a whole different thing, okay? Because them old timers had to cut line, run that chain down there, and you had to do everything by line of sight, but now it's not like that. You can take a GPS system, a satellite in some thick woods, and it might go on uh, uh, auto for a little bit, but if you got a good system, especially like a Hyper or a Trimble, it'll be fixed maybe in a couple seconds, maybe in a couple minutes. But with that being said, it says here that there are challenges. It's absolutely amazing because what I see this taking place as, as in further development... Wait... Other challenges stem from a lack of accuracy of curb placement in parking lots, which then conflict with the geolocation data the robot uses to orient. Before the layout can be done, the landscape contractors install the curbs and the small trees for the area. Christensen said, In this case, the trees are so small it does not matter, but the curbs matter, and the landscape contractor does not care so much about a half-inch accuracy. This makes the use of CAD drawing for robot pre-marking layout difficult because the high efficiency of the robot is only achieved if you have a correct CAD drawing that reflects actual location of the curb. That's just simply laying laying your points over, especially if you go out and shoot some points and you put like a Google Earth picture over it. It's not going to be exact, but it'll kind of give you an idea. But these are... I mean, precise accuracy. So if you go do the boundary of a site plan location, if you go out and shoot the boundary, 
and then come back and then take the site plans and then overlay it with what you shot, you're at least going to be within a few tenths. Okay? Give or take. But they say contractors accepting projects to mark pavement indoors for safety lines in large warehouse or production facilities or in a construction environment to mark wall locations can also leverage this technology. Apart from pre-marking lines to be painted later, the robot can be used to mark height curves in support of floor leveling processes. But again, the use case requires changes to the hardware updates. In the indoor cases, the GPS will not work. Okay. But it's kind of weird because they were just talking about total station a few minutes ago, but I guess they're talking about GPS now, but if you were doing it from line of sight, it would, it would most definitely work. But it says customers typically use a robotic total station. See, that was even before I said that. Christian said the robotic name of the robotic total station comes from the fact that it automatically follows the robot around and thereby automizes the work of a person. The combination of the robot and robotic total station allows for very accurate indoor layouting. Tiny Mobile Robots has a separate product line that marks parking and sports field lines on turf grass, but has not pursued line painting on pavement. But I can promise you this, that it is coming. This article is about a year old, and I can promise you guys that this is coming. These people are going to replace us. It says, final marking with the robot has two challenges, Christensen said. One is the problem with trees and buildings... And if the pre-marking layout is disturbed by trees and houses, you can easily see it with your eyes and can correct it before the final marking. Furthermore, the paint is used for final marking is often thermoplastic that needs to be heated to 400 degrees. This cannot be done with a small robot. That means there will need to be some level of human influence in this process instead of just sitting behind tapping a screen. Despite these challenges, work is progressing towards an automated approach to a final line marking. Road Prints Incorporated and Case Western Reserve University have collaborated on a prototype pavement marking vehicle to demonstrate that the technology can stripe cheaper, faster, and with significantly less risk to road workers. What did I say in the very beginning? For parking lots, an Estonian company has developed an automated line marking robot last year nailed down to 775, $775,000 to help develop in its line of parking lot and road marketing robots. Ten Lines claims on its website the robot stripes the parking lot seven times faster than other means with no pre-marking. The company has not yet announced availability or distribution in the United States. $775,000. I know some guys that are tripping out over spending $2,400 to get an eight fifty. dollars Can you imagine trying to start up a business with $775,000 just for your equipment? Guys, I would not be surprised one bit if the pavement industry, as it pertains to striping, tilts a lot more and starts depending upon surveying a lot more than what it is now. Can you imagine instead of your land surveyor just coming out there to do a pin survey or a topo or even an Alta for that matter? But could you imagine your surveyor coming out there to actually stripe the parking lot with a GLONASS operated robot following site plans? It would be crazy. Anyways, guys, what do y'all think about this? Is this cool? Is this not cool? Does this scare some of you guys just starting off in the industry knowing that your equipment is on its way and you just started up your website? What do you think about this? Will robots totally replace us? I think they will. What do you think? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon, and we will see you in the next one.